Hey y'all and welcome back to our channel. So if you are new here, my name is Emily and we make recovery videos for severe anxiety, agoraphobia, panic disorder, DPDR, etc. So if you are struggling with that, definitely subscribe to this channel. I make videos very frequently. Um, also check the link in the description to this video. I have my free recovery guide. I have um, a link to my private Facebook community that you can join. Plus, I have an application for a group and one-on-one -on -one coaching if that's something that you need. Now, today, something that I want to cover is basically um, my POTS diagnosis, how I went from being debilitated and homebound, bedbound to living a normal life. So let's just jump into that. I don't have too much time. I can probably only make this video like 20 minutes. So I might not cover everything, but I wanna at least get this out there because this is such a common question that I get. Um, first, that I, first thing that I wanna say is definitely check out my long recovery story video. It lists all of my symptoms, when this started, how this started, everything right because i'm just going to really limit this to like pots symptoms right now and i know that a lot of that kind of overlaps with some of my other anxiety symptoms um but yeah so basically what happened is starting in 2021 i fell into this anxiety cycle panic attacks 24 7 um kind of like hot flush type feelings gi issues heart palpitations heart racing um, insomnia, uh, derealization, and depersonalization, kind of just feeling like stoned out of it all the time, feeling like drugged, um, feeling, this is definitely POTS, very faint, like I was going to pass out 24-7, chronic, chronic head pressure, chronic headaches, head pain, tension, um, tension pain in my neck, tension pain in my head, visual issues, massive visual issues. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like a very short list of my many, many symptoms that I was getting at that time, but developed that literally overnight after a gallbladder surgery. And if you watch my video, looking back, I would say this was a compounding thing. I had um, a bad, I had a lot of stressors building up. I had good and bad. I had a bad case of COVID. Uh, three months later, I had my surgery. And so my stress levels were just compounding and compounding and compounding. And eventually my body kind of snapped for lack of a better term. And that's when everything happened at once symptom wise. And this got so bad where I was so debilitated that I was unable to leave my house. I was not driving at all. I was not taking care of my kids by myself. I was literally not even taking a bath by myself because I thought I was gonna faint. I could not walk to my mailbox. I couldn't do anything, you guys. I was like completely debilitated. So again, watch my long story because I go way more into detail on that. But it was really bad. And I started seeing, um, you know, every specialist under the sun, getting every test, every blood test, every scan, um, naturopaths, everything I was doing. And eventually that led me to being accepted into the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, which is where I had heard of POTS for the first time. So POTS is um, what postural orthostatic tachycardia. And basically the diagnostic criteria is when you are upright, your heart rate, I believe is like 30 beats per minute faster than when you're lying down and that's maintained. So like say I'm laying down and it's like 65, but then I stand up and it stays at, you know, 120 or something like that. And that's just what it is when I'm upright, not exercising, just upright or standing or whatever. That's the criteria. So I was told at Mayo Clinic about POTS. That's where they also tested me for EDS, hypermobility, where your joints are, you know, hypermobile, which is weird, right? But um, that mast cell activation, which is that histamine response, it all kind of is intertwined and goes hand in hand. There's also not like a ton of conclusive data on this. So they only know so much about it. But anyway, got formally diagnosed with that there by the tilt table test. So it was formal diagnostic testing tested positive at that time. That was in 2022, okay? So now once I had heard of this, um, my additional symptoms too, besides all the stuff that I had mentioned, everything in my video, 
was a lot of like blood pooling in my legs. When I would lay down, my legs were nice and tan and looked normal and I would stand up and within a few minutes they were purple and splotchy and had kind of like white marks all over them and lots of blood pooling. My feet and my toes were always super purple and um, you know, prior to the anxiety cycle, I did have those symptoms and those started for me, at least when I noticed them in 2019 when I had my first baby. And so during that pregnancy, I noticed my feet were really purple. I'd get my toes painted and I'd be like, well, I can't paint them like blue because then they look weird and my feet just look kind of dead because my feet are always like blue and purple. And then I remember taking pictures of my legs. I'd get out of the shower and my legs were just completely like blood pooled and purple and marbly and weird looking. And I sent them to my OB and he's like, I don't know, pregnancy. We'll see what happens, you know. So I had that, um, definitely really bad heat intolerance. Like if I would take a bath or a shower, I would get out of the bath and just immediately have to go like crash on my bed because I felt like I was gonna pass out and I was just like so out of breath, you know. Um, doing normal things like blow drying my hair or straightening my hair, I'm like dripping sweat, feeling like <laughs> like just so not normal, right? And this was, this was leading up, and I just thought that that was how my body was, that was my normal, whatever. Um, once I fell into the anxiety cycle and POTS was going crazy, that was amplified. I mean, even like lifting my uh, hairbrush like this to like, you know, do the, the roll brush and blow dry my hair, blow it out or whatever, was nearly impossible. Um, I would also notice, and thinking back into my childhood and like teenagehood, I would sit in my sink to do my hair and makeup because I didn't like standing. And I'd always been very in shape um, and not overweight or anything like that growing up. And so it was just kind of weird that I couldn't tolerate just standing up to straighten my hair. I was in my sink or I would have like one leg, you know, propped up on my sink like this and I'd be standing. And that that's also funny with the hypermobile thing because it was very weird. And then growing up too, I was a cheerleader and I did gymnastics and stuff like that. And I was very flexible. So there were definitely signs, you know, looking back that I had been, um, that I had had these POTS-like symptoms probably my whole life. So I would say there is definitely a genetic component to it. However, I also believe in what I learned from Mayo Clinic is there has to be a stress component in there too for everything to kind of like activate, right? It has to be a perfect storm. And so what I would say for myself and for many people out there is what happens is we get hit with COVID's a big one, right? Childbirth's a big one, um, pregnancy, anything that's very stressful in your body or just compounding stressful factors over time, surgeries, whatever it might be that stresses your body um, can start to flare up those symptoms. So for myself today, I would say I live a very normal life. Um, I don't have chronic daily pot symptoms anymore unless I'm under a lot of stress. So during my last pregnancy, I'm like seven weeks postpartum. I had pot symptoms. Um, a few weeks postpartum, I had pot symptoms, right? They just started to kind of get better for me actually in the last couple of weeks. So yeah, it's always on the table, right? But it's not um, something that's debilitating for me anymore. But that was kind of a spoiler alert, right? Let me get back to the, the depth of it. So anyway, went to Mayo, learned a lot of things, um, was given a lot of information and thankfully, I had also heard about the anxiety cycle at this time and how the body can kind of reach that stress limit, give you symptoms, which I would, I would personally call POTS, um, something under that anxiety, nervous system, dysregulation umbrella. So for me, POTS is a symptom. Like, yes, I believe it's also genetic for me, but it is a symptom, right? It's not like I had to cure my anxiety cycle and then I had to cure POTS and then I had to cure this and this and this. POTS was just all one and the same. So as I worked to cure my anxiety cycle, POTS went with it. You know what I mean? It toned down with it over time. Um, so anyway, with Mayo, they did let me know about things like compression garments and elevating your bed and sodium intake and electrolytes and fluids. Um, different medications, beta blockers, all that kind of stuff. But long story short, I did not do any of that. I had tried some of that. I had tried the POTS socks. I had tried, you know, the water, the electrolytes, the sodium, um, beta blockers, propanolol, you know, I had tried all those things, but 
I was so anxious at the time and I was like having so much panic and so many other symptoms that it just wasn't working, you know? So I kind of used my recovery as a way of pausing. And I was like, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna see what my body does. And so I tried the response. I tried getting back to normalcy. I tried not focusing so much and identifying with POTS and all the symptoms that came along with it and really got back into living alongside the symptoms. And that's when I noticed that those symptoms were dying down because my body was less under stress. You know, I wasn't feeding into this anxiety cycle with adding fear, adding focus, trying to fix, 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 accommodating, you know, scared to go do anything normal, scared to drive, scared to make plans, um, scared to be in the heat, scared to go on a hike, scared to exercise, scared to go to the gym. I just did it. And I was kind of like, let's see what happens, you know? Um, let's see if I actually pass out because I hadn't passed out, right? I'd, I'd never passed out through the whole experience. Um, also, let me add to you, I had a lot of dizziness with these symptoms, like severe dizziness, including two bouts of actual vertigo, but every day was just the chronic rocking, swaying, um, depth perception off, dizziness sort of feelings. And so it was very, very, very hard to get back into normalcy. So don't make it, don't think that it was just like, oh, I just decided I'm gonna live my life. Like it was very, very flipping hard. And I had to make that decision every single day, every single moment it was up and it was down. But all of that is in my recovery guide as far as exactly what I did, how I did it, all that kind of stuff. So I don't wanna go too much into that in this video. Check out the guide, definitely. Um, but I would encourage you, if you're currently dealing with this, don't let POTS become your identity because what happens is I see all these ads where it's like, you know, pacing trackers and stuff for POTS and I saw a commercial the other day or like an ad on Facebook and it was literally this girl and it was like, you know, thanks to my pacing tracker, now I know that I can go stand up and do my hair for two minutes and then I'll sit down and then I'll stand up and then I'll sit down and I'm just like, this is not normal. It's not a normal way of living. And at best it's coping, but I would say it's even a step further because it's feeding into it. And it's just keeping your body in that stress response. It's conditioning it to not be able to function, you know? And yeah, it's not, it's not benefiting you if you're living this super accommodated lifestyle because of POTS. Because there was a time where literally I had convinced myself, like I'm gonna have to be in a wheelchair. Like I can't walk around, I can't do this. I can't be a soccer mom one day. I can't be a baseball mom. I can't go to my kids football games because it's hot outside. Um, I just, I couldn't do anything. At the end of the day, it's like, I'm a, I was a 20 something year old, healthy, young woman. Like I was capable of doing these things. And so don't get, don't, don't get like into this trap of, I am so debilitated, I am disabled, I am unable to ever function again because with that mindset, you do kind of limit yourself, you know, to not being able to. And again, I'm not saying it's not real, I'm not saying that it's not difficult, but there are ways of getting out of this. Like the body is amazing and I believe that God designed our bodies in such a way that it can recover and our bodies can heal themselves essentially. We just have to allow them to do that. So. I'm sure I did not even cover like, <laughs> you know, I just, I kind of like scratched the surface of a POTS discussion and there's so much more that I could say and there's so much that I've forgotten, but I wanted to get it out there because I just get the question so much. So I hope this helps. Um, definitely download my free recovery guide and ask questions in the comments because I'm happy to do a Q&A specifically on POTS. Um, I don't know if I said this, you know, yet, but just to send it home, like I'm living a normal life. I'm traveling, I'm exercising every single day. I walk like three miles a day. I go to the gym like three times a week and lift weights. I am living a very normal lifestyle and you can too. Like you are not too far gone. Okay. So anyway, I hope it's encouraging and let me know your questions and we'll tackle them in the next video.